want to talk about planting groups or starting groups. Uh, one of our dreams is that every believer would be involved in part of a small group, being discipled. But for that to take place, we have to train leaders. We have to open up a number of new homes, and uh, we, we dream of that. But what does it look like to plant new groups? I'd like to suggest that there's uh, four stages of starting new groups. The first uh, stage would be identifying a new leader. So you've got a current group that meets in your lounge, and they uh, meet week to week. It's a healthy group. You're very excited. And in a sense, you might say, I could do this until Jesus returns. But that's not the point. The point is that ultimately we're also there to facilitate growth and to release people. It starts with identifying who are the potential leaders that could possibly lead one day. Now, I don't think we're looking for perfection. Someone took a risk with me one day and possibly you. And uh, we should look at them through the same lens, these potential leaders. I think look for more than just one leader. Look at the possibility of two or three, identifying them for your group or for other groups along the way. That would be the first step. A second step would be the training process and feedback along the way. Now, training will, will happen in a formal way where maybe they attend a potential leaders training course or collect, connect leaders training uh, course. That's formal. But I think training also happens on the go. And this is where many times I fall short as a leader. Connect group comes uh, too soon on a Tuesday night. And I haven't given thought to, I want to be releasing that guy in six months time. Uh, how am I going to get him from here to a six month time of being ready and able? Now, being able is not just every now and again saying, hey, will you share tonight? Uh, I think being ready and able is looking at all the different elements of a connect group. What about the communication every week? Maybe getting them involved in that. What about the catering, uh, the food, the rosters? What about the pastoring where people are in need or just need some shepherding? They should be part of that. Uh, what about the facilitating of a discussion? They need to do that and have some great feedback that helps them when they encounter a difficult person or difficult questions. Why? Because it's during the safe space. When they launched out to plant a group and it happens there, often it catches them by surprise and can be quite debilitating and discouraging as a new leader. So I'm saying training needs to be on the go and regular and not just dropping them in the deep end, but also giving feedback after the meeting, encouragement, loads of encouragement, and then also one or two little adjustment issues. Why don't you try this next time and that? A third thing to consider is just when it's time to release people, how do we do this? And I've got a few thoughts here. The first way that I release people is I've, I've called it the deep end release. Uh, this might be a case of someone that says, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to pioneer. And I look at the people around me and think, I don't have faith at this point to send these people with this guy, but he's a pioneer, he's got courage, let's let him go. And often, he does a great job. He goes and finds some people, he gathers, he preaches the gospel, and it's a wonderful thing. The beauty of this, though, is that if he fails along the way, uh, he can tuck in again. And it's not the responsibility of having taken people and people are hurt along the way. He's been able to cut his own path. That's a deep end release. A uh, second type of release would be with a small core. Now, this is for me where people uh, I'm looking at what is their capacity relationally, uh, in terms of their time, etc. I'll send a small core with them. And this is what I'm asking. Does he have faith for the people that he's going for? That's really important. They can't be imposed on it. But also, do the people have faith for the new leader? And uh, can we get some synergy going that they could get excited? Often these people, they're quite excited about a smaller environment. They're excited about a new mission. And uh, it can be quite exciting to release these guys. A third way that we release people is with a large group. Now, this is for me where I've looked at a leader and thought, this guy's influential. I can see leadership mantle on him. People listen. He can relate across the board. Uh, and I'd be willing to send a large portion of a group with him. Make sure that they trained well. And uh, then the release moment comes where they can take that group and grow it and lead it. Another way that we release people is what I've called the specific group. This might be an age-related category. It might be around... Uh, ladies, maybe, ladies that aren't at work, they can meet in the morning. It might be around babies, a moms and tots type of group, a 20s group. That's, it's a specific type of group. And then the, the last type of release uh, for me has been very helpful looking at 
some area specifics where we are in Durban. There were a whole bunch of people that were coming from the south of Durban to the north where we meet. And uh, we wanted them to be in connect groups, but they weren't willing to drive. So we found a courageous leader and we gathered all these guys together. It wasn't big, but we managed to start this group on the bluff that's still going to It's a very healthy group. It's been around uh, a geographical area that's been very helpful. My last comment is just as we launch these groups and grow with this dream for everyone to be involved, I think the, the last point is that new leaders need support at every level. We shouldn't just be dropping them, celebrating them and running. Uh, regular contact, regular support, regular encouragement, just like uh, we ourselves need as leaders. Thank you.